Hello guys, welcome back to Ezentaxa, Andrea Papito here. In this video, I'm going to explain you how to invest in Italy as a bed and breakfast activity in 2022. So, before moving forward with this topic, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel if you're interested in Italian tax system, if you want to relocate to Italy, if you want to uh, explore the Italian fiscal system and provide an along optimization plan and if you are new in this channel, in Taxa, we always explain this kind of subject, this kind of topic, in case you want to invest in this country, in case you want to purchase a property in this country, or simply want to move your fiscal residence, we explain you exactly how to optimize your taxes, how to reduce your fiscal burden, and how to manage to have a long tax strategy plan in order to live in this country, pay as less tax possible. So let's go back to the topic and let's see how the bed and breakfast activity works in Italy, which is one of the most important activity because the, tur the tourism in Italy is one of the most important uh, um, uh, source of, of revenue for the entire country. And a lot of people, a lot of you guys maybe are wondering what if I'm investing some money on this kind of activity? What if I purchase a property, I renovate this property and, and I turn into a bed and breakfast and then I have to run an activity as a bed and breakfast? So from this table, you might see that it's slightly complicated, but I try to summarize everything and I will explain you uh, step by step exactly how it works. And actually, I split this table into columns. One is the type of bed and breakfast, breakfast activity and the other column is the taxation, which is the most important topic. You want to know how much taxes you're going to pay when you, uh, at the end, you will make some profit out of it. So this is the most, the most important classification as the easiest way to understand what is your situation, what is your scenario, and how you have to choose the bed and breakfast activity in the best way possible in order to optimize your taxation and all the rest of your incomes because this taxation is going this year this revenue is going to be merged with your existing revenue if you have any so first of all uh, if you move to italy and you want to run a bed and breakfast most likely you are intended to purchase a property a residential property that you want to turn into a bed and breakfast at the beginning you don't know how this activity works you don't know if the place where you have purchased your property it's full of tourists, maybe it's a good area, maybe it's not, but you want to explore, you want to understand if this activity makes sense for you. And for this scenario, the best option is to open a bed and breakfast as an occasional activity. So the occasional activity allows you to be a physical person, which is in Italian, which for you means an individual, but for Italian fiscal point of view, physical person means a private, an individual. So a person is a person that it's physical, it's different from a juridical person, just to give you an understanding about the Italian fiscal system. So the bed and breakfast as occasional work, of course, has some limits. It's an occasional activity, so it should not be your first source of income. And you have some limited in terms of how many beds you can have in your property. So I have listed here in my notes exactly what are the limits based on the bed and breakfast or occasional activity that you have to respect in order to stay in this uh, scenario. So the first one is that you have to live in the same property. And actually this is a very, very good news because in Italy, if you live in the same property, oh, well, if you live in the property where you have set up your primary residency, you're going to spare the real estate property tax. In Italian it's called IMU. Uh, we extensively talk about this tax in our channel. So again, subscribe to the channel, it's very important. Um, and you're going to spare this, uh, this tax. The property tax in Italy is not due if this is your primary residence. So, you can run a bed and breakfast in which you're living in, so you have spare rooms, you want to give it to someone, some tourists, some guys, and you want to only rent certain rooms, certain empty rooms that you have in your property, maybe your property is enough big to host other people. And the limit is that you cannot um, rent to tourists more than three rooms with a maximum number of six beds, okay? So those are the limits to run a bed and breakfast occasional activity. Other constraints is that you cannot hire anybody. You have to provide yourself bed and breakfast and the check-in and check-out service, so the base minimum services. And at most, who can help you are just a member of your family, okay? Instead, if you want to move a little bit forward um, with the bed and breakfast as a professional activity, so you want to do something more, you want to add more services at this, uh, at this uh, activity, you can run it without opening a VAT position. And this is very, very good because 
uh, with the VAT position, you're going to have more bureaucratic step. Okay, you have to basically uh, register your activity at the Chamber of Commerce. You have to have an accountant, maybe you have to provide more accountability. So you can keep the bed and breakfast more like an individual, but you can run, you can jump into professional solution, in professional status. And for this, the limit, limit are lower or better. You don't have to only use your member of your family for help with the basic services. You can actually add other services. So you can actually add the rental bike, tourist guide. So all the services that might be, might be a certain kind of sense connected to your activity, okay? So that can improve the price of your activity. So this is a basic uh, entrepreneur strategy. I increase my uh, daily night, uh, daily stay, adding some or extra services, or simply uh, uh, requiring an extra service at the top of the uh, of the stay. And this can be run as a professional activity, as a bed and breakfast, without open a VAT position. In this case, you don't need to live in the property. So you can have another property, you can live in another place, this maybe is just a, a property used for this kind of activity. So basically you will purchase a property as an investment and you want to have it like a bed and breakfast activity. So in this case, you're going to pay the real estate property tax. Okay. And here the limits are a little bit higher. So you can have a maximum number of six rooms and a maximum number of 12 beds. So you can host actually two persons in the same room. And this is also valid for the occasional one. And the third category, or this type of column, is the full professional. So here you don't have any limits, with limits that we have talked so far disappears, and actually uh, you have to, from the other side, open a VAT. Um, and now we're going to understand from the taxation point of view, what is the difference between these three scenarios and which one might be more useful for your case, for your particular case. So for the bed and breakfast as occasional activity, you have two possibility, you have two taxations. And or here means that you can opt. So it's not mandatory, you can either opt for a simple 21 flat tax, you pay only 21 flat tax on your revenue from the bed and breakfast occasional activity, or alternatively you can opt for the RPF taxation, which is the taxation uh, done in rates that starts from 23% up to 43% uh, based on your income. And this income is going to be accumulated with your existing income. Okay, so for this case, you will have from the Italian state a 5% forfeit deduction on, uh, on costs. The Italian state here says, okay, you, I imagine you have 5% of your revenue as cost, so you reduce your income by, 90, uh, by 5%, so only 95% of your income will be fall into the RPF taxation. Okay, this is the, uh, the case for occasional bed and breakfast. The second option, as we discussed, if you move into professional uh, scenario, you still have an option here. Either you pay 21% on your entire revenue, but since it's a professional activity and since you have added more services, you will actually uh, have the real cost 100% deductible. So for example, if you're going to give a service like a rental bike or a tourist guide, you have to purchase some, some materials inherent with this uh, kind of activity. So coherent with this kind of activity. And all these elements, all these purchases, all these costs can be deducted against your revenue. So you act like a professional. So you purchase a bike or a certain number of bikes and you deduct the, the, the cost of the bike against the revenue. And this can be deducted and what remains can be taxed at the RPF taxation, okay? From 23% up to 43% in terms of how much revenue you already have. But since we have the option of 21% flat, the flat tax doesn't take into account the cost. So if you opt for the 21% flat tax, you have to consider that any kind of cost that you have uh, made um, cannot be uh, used to reduce your revenue. So 21% will be calculated all, all on your entire revenue, on the 100% of your revenue. Um, so this flat tax is here makes sense when you have very limited amount of cost or when you have already other type of incomes at the top of your RPF taxation. For example, you already are an employee or you already, you already have a professional activity or since you're coming from abroad, you're still working for your foreign company as administrator of this company and you receive a lot of money from another country. All these incomes, they accumulate one at the top of the other 
on the RPF taxation. So if your if your taxation is already higher and you are close to forty three percent because your income is bigger than sixty thousand euro, seventy thousand euro, then your best option is to apply for the twenty one flat on your entire revenue, even if you have some cost. So it's basically it's a matter of calculated with the accountant what is the best solution for you or your personal situation. Instead, the third case, as a full professional activity, you have to open a VAT position, so you have to choose which one of the regime you have to apply for. For the professional activity, of course, if your income is lower than 65,000 euro, we always suggest to go for the fourth regime. You, here you have a taxation between 12% up to 16%. Why so low when we apply for the fourth regime? The reason why is that when you apply for the full professional service and you open a VAT position, so you have a VAT number associated to your activity, you're going to be a 100% full professional bed and breakfast entrepreneur, okay? So a forfeit regime is fully adaptable for this scenario. And for, since the forfeit regime means that the state gives you a forfeit cost, the Italian state estimates your forfeit cost for this specific activity. And the estimation of this cost, of this forfeit cost, it's 60%. So the Italian state thinks that regardless of your real cost, 60% of your income as a bed and breakfast, um, it's deductible. So let's say you're earning from this bed and breakfast activity in Italy, 100,000 euro, only 40,000 euro will be subject to taxation, okay? And then, you deduct your social security, so the IMPS in Italy, and then you pay in the forfeit regime only 5% tax flat for the first five years and 15% from the sixth year onwards. And of course, the overall between the social contribution and the very small amount of tax to pay, it's an overall, again, tax plus social contribution, it's an overall of 12% up to 16% the other five years, everything combined, okay? So I here I extract the real fiscal pressure, which we call it like taxes on social security plus tax, uh, a normal tax, a normal flat tax that you pay in the forfeit regime. While if you're not eligible for the forfeit regime because you're already passing this income since the beginning, either you can apply anyway the forfeit regime only the first year, you can benefit from it, but then you have to exit this regime and you have to jump to the ordinary regime, which fall entirely in RPF taxation, which basically follow the same idea, the coherent cost has 100% deduction, and, um, and the rest of what remains will be taxed at the RPF ordinary taxation between 23% up to 43%. But be careful, if you are eligible for the impatriate regime, you apply for the ordinary, uh, sorry, ordinary VAT number, ordinary position, but as ordinary position can be combined with the impatriate regime, and then your RPF can be deducted by 90% if you relocate to south of Italy. So watch our video on impatriate regime in this channel. We have talked also about this subject. And so I will invite you to subscribe to the channel and check the uh, video in which we discuss in details about the impatriate regime and how it works and how it can be applicable for this specific scenario. And the last option is that you have or you preview to purchase multiple properties or a very big property. So you need to to, to, to host a lot of people, so you, you're not looking for any limitations, you want to really invest in something big. At the, for this specific scenario, the best solution is always an SRL, which is the a limited liability company that you can create in Italy, um, which is basically is the most effective instrument for big, big revenues. So, I hope I give you an understanding of how could be uh, your taxation in the bed and breakfast activity in Italy. If you have any questions and if you want a, consulta a consultation from us, uh, in the description below the video you will have a link to our quotes and we can basically assist you and with the accountability for this specific uh, act code activity, for this specific activity. And if you need a consultancy for one hour, we will be happy to help you and to uh, guide you through all these scenarios and allow you to understand exactly which is the best scenario for your specific case and personal situation. Moreover, how to optimize the taxes as much as possible. As you can see here, this is how uh, the structure of the taxation for the bed and breakfast works in Italy. Of course, there are some common grounds. There are other things that you have to keep in mind, the bureaucracy behind it, some license you have to require for certain kind of community in Italy, not for everything. There's also the tourist tax uh, that has to be added to this uh, daily stay for the tourists. 
um, and something that needs to be discussed in terms of rules for some specific cities, especially those Italian cities where the percentage of tourist attraction is really, really high. Of course, it's more simple op to open a bed and breakfast in a remote village in Italy, which is unknown, rather than opening in one of the most famous cities, such as Rome, uh, Venice, Milan, Naples, etc, etc, etc. That's it for today. I hope I help you a lot for this and see you in the next video. Bye.